this is the talk I'm trying to to give. I don't think it's going to last a, a full hour, more on the 30 minute side. And feel free to go if you get bored. And <laughs> and you sh you need to. I'm f I'm sorry for my English. I'm not uh, from the U.S. I come all over from Uruguay. So if you understand, don't understand something, just raise your hand, say hey, please repeat it, and I will. Hopefully, I will do it better the next time. Okay, there we go. Reimagine JavaScript on React development. How many of you know JavaScript? I guess pretty much. And React. Yeah, it's not the same thing, right? Yes. <laughs> there was less hands raising that one. Okay, first, who am I? My name is Gabriel Chartok, but I don't go by that name. Everybody calls me Cherta, so you can start calling me that way uh, right now. I work at Ingenious. Ingenious is a company that's based in Uruguay, but we have also an office here in Catalyst, so it's, you can pass and, and check that out. And, but, but I work in Uruguay, in Montevideo, so it's the Bay City. Even though we are a distributed company, so 100% of the people is distributed. Even in Montevideo, probably half of the people works from their houses, their homes, instead of going to the nice building we have. I don't know why we have it. And, <laughs> and I'm the CEO, I'm a chief operation officer there, and that means a guy who doesn't code anymore. You know, like three years into this thing, so I, I, I can only code when I come into conferences and talk with people like you, but I don't actually do any code. <laughs> well, some code, but not as much as I want, right? So I'm going to talk about JavaScript, but the ultimate goal of this talk is to talk about reason, what it is. How many of you have heard at least about reason ML? Well, very little. That's nice because this talk is about uh, getting to know reason a little bit better. And why I should care. Right? It's, it's important. I know JavaScript, right? You know JavaScript, most of you. So why should I care about learning another language? What, what's the promise? What's the catch? What, what should I be learning here? So I would try to throw up a couple of, uh, yeah, Bojack Horseman there. Uh, uh, I would try to throw up a couple of definitions that will make no sense to anybody. But hopefully we can work through those definitions and get a little bit more sense of what reason is and what type of language is what we're talking about. So a couple of them, right. So it's a static, statically typed function of programming language that compiles to JavaScript. So that seems pretty complex, right? It's a lot of buzzwords. And also, it's a new syntax for OCaml plus a, a tool chain to compile to JavaScript. Well, I know what you're thinking, right? You are not impressing me with your <laughs> tiny toy language. Uh, I have my own toy language that does the same, right? And you name it. It's PureScript, it's Elm, it's uh, TypeScript, it's uh, whatever, right? Uh, I have my own uh, vanilla language that compiles to JavaScript. Right now, everybody compiles to JavaScript. So if you want to be really successful in, in technology right now, you either do blockchain or you compile to JavaScript. Like a <laughs> couple of things you could do to actually. <laughs> actually <laughs> have land in a good salary. Uh, so let's explore that one. So reason why is functional and what functional means, right? It means your your best abstraction or your only base abstraction is a function, right? So you know JavaScript, you know what functions is, and you you may know that you can pass a function as a parameter to other functions. So that's a nice thing. And that makes JavaScript a really good language to learn because you learn about how functions can compose themselves. So in the same manner, reason uh, does the same. And also, when you say function, you probably are talking about immutable data structures. So it doesn't mean you cannot mutate an object. You, you cannot push to an array. You need to return a new array with the extra data, right? Makes kind of sense. So. But what statically type means, right? It's, I don't know if you can see it, barely see, but I'm sorry. But I will try to walk through, right? Statically type means you can get to write your types while you're typing your code instead of gaining those types while you're executing it, right? So this uh, has a couple of advantages. First, your compiler on your program knows beforehand what is going to be there, right? I cannot add a number, a string, because it won't work, right? Well, I, I can do it in JavaScript, right? How many of us have done it? But it will concatenate the string with the number. We won't do the things you are actually wanted to do, right? So in this, I, I'm showing just some reason code. So you can declare a type when you have a specific word to do it. 
And it really looked like a JSON object. It's called a record, but anyway. And this type will have an ID, which is the type int, and will have a name, which is a type string. And then you can have a state, which you can have a list of models that you defined previously, and uh, loading, and a message, and this nice uh, optional thing we'll talk about uh, in a bit, right? So get, having types, it, it's usually some good thing I want to have, right? But it comes with uh, some drawbacks, but the drawback is you need to specify the type, right? It won't, <laughs> it won't do the thing what you, that you want if you don't specify it. But still, it's something you may want to have. And the, the other thing is it has a sound type system. It, when it means a sound type system, it means everything you wrote on the type is going to be true. It will remain true while you are executing your program. So if you said this thing is an int, it will remain an int while executing it or won't compile at all. So there is no. I will say this is, this is not true, but for the sake of this talk, it's true. It will have <laughs> runtime uh, exceptions, right? For reason, this is, you have that. Like, for reason, this is not true, but for statically typed functional programming languages, this is true. And you will have, uh, com uh, you either compile and have no runtime exceptions, or have then and you don't have the compile step. You can have a transpiled step, but not the compile one, right? So. This is the other thing. So I was saying, having typed is, is something you, you will like to have, right? It will make your code a little bit better, a little bit faster probably also. But writing types, how many of you have done like Java, C Sharp? I, I've, I've done, yeah, I'm sorry for you, but we all <laughs> kind of did it, right? So the, the bad thing about, I guess, about Java and C Sharp, uh, besides almost everything, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> is that you need to specify every type you write, right? It's a, and it's, it's a bad thing, it's, it's useless. And that's why I remember when I picked up JavaScript, it was like liberating. I would say, yeah, I don't wanna say this is an integer. I, it's clearly I'm passing here an integers and I'm, I will do, I as a developer will do the right thing. But you know what? We as developers, we never do the right thing. We <laughs> add numbers and strings and object even, right? And you, we get, weird NAND stuff and people start complaining about JavaScript. But at that time, it seemed like useful. So I guess this type system Reason has, and it, this is not uh, specifically to Reason, but to everything, has a great thing of having inference on type. So I have a, can you read that? Yeah, it's, it, it's readable. So it's great because it looks like JavaScript, and, and, but it's not. So that's one of the coolest things about Reason. So it has the let operator, which is, binding some name to something out there, which is add, and it's a function, an arrow function, and there are no other functions in, in reason, it's, uh, it's arrow or nothing, where you can, I'm, I'm adding two, two numbers, probably, and I'm, I'm sending add one and r as a string, and it tells me, hey, this is not, this is not correct, this, I'm not combining that. Why this, uh, we have this? It's because the plus, it's only intent to add integers. So this is a little bit cumbersome because if you want to concatenate strings, then you need a new, a new operand. You, can use, you cannot use the add. In reason, it's like a plus plus instead of just a plus. But this is a slightly different uh, approach, but it makes a huge difference, right? When I'm saying I'm, I'm adding something with a plus, I'm always adding two integers. So it's able to come and say, hey, this expression has the type string, but uh, I'm expecting an integer, so go fix whatever needs to be fixed. And it will compile and it won't uh, generate any JavaScript at the end, right? A little bit more. Ah, I have my, I, I add reminders to my slides <laughs> because I keep forgetting, you know, I, I need to show you some samples. So a little bit on the expressiveness of the type system. But for me, this is, you know, very personal. For me, it's more expressive than Java. Somebody can argue that Java is nicer and better or maybe Kotlin or whatever, right? But for me, it's more expressive. And it has the three things that I really like, which is variance, pattern matching, and type arguments. And we will look at, hopefully, a web browser. It works, yeah. So it's a demo and it works, so that's great. This is the, oh, you are not seeing it, gosh. And I'm not seeing anything. Okay, technical problems, one second. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exit, exit, yeah, definitely. 
That's what we want, exit. Can you see this? No, probably not. It's too small. But you can see that, yeah. right? OK. This is the try reason console. The, the idea of this console is you write some reason there. We have this part, which we won't talk about right now, your camera and the generated JavaScript, because reason, as I told you, generates JavaScript. But the cool thing is you can come here and declare the same thing, declare the same thing we have. And we have these, type, these special types, which are variant types. So I can say action will, t will have either create, update, success with something with a model thing on it, right? Delete or delete success with an ID. And if you see ID here, it's, uh, it's an int, right? So this kind of thing help you a lot when expressing your code, right? It's not that you are saying you need to have a class and then a inheritance with every different type. Now I can have an action type where down there and make it value this, all these things I need to make it value, right? So this is great. So great, and the cool thing about it is you don't need to even worry about having the old branches of the switch. So we have pattern matching. Pattern match is something that it works with the variant, right? I have an action type that can be create, update, whatever, right? So I can pattern match my, the action that is coming, and this is a reducer. How many of you know Redux? You have used it some time? Well, this is the same idea. So I got a, an initial state, and, and then I have a, an action, I will return a new state as a result of it, right? And this looks really like JavaScript, hopefully. So I can switch one action and say, okay, if it is success, I will do something. It doesn't matter what, what I will do, right? And if it is create, I will do this other stuff or update or delete and then keep, and that was not implemented yet. So it's way to know. Great I added comments to my own code, right? Because this is something I copied and pasted from, from some code that was working. So this is a cool thing. I, ca I can pattern match this action. And the cool thing is if I forget something, let's say I, I don't add the create, so bear with me. The compiler, the, compi the compiler, reason compiler will tell you, you forgot to handle a possible value here. For example, create. And this is great because this means we have a, a sound type system. It will type check everything. And if you try to pattern match something that's missing, it will let you know. And again, it won't compile. Are you stick with me? Yeah, still? Yeah, OK, that's nice. I'm not, but are we there? Yeah. So and the last thing I wanted to sell, to, to sell you, yeah, it's selling you, is that it's really close to JavaScript, right? It even has a JS package where you can use regular uh, JavaScript functions like log. This is similar to doing console log, right? So that thing, I guess, it will either compile in JavaScript. It will be body JavaScript. So for me, that coming from JavaScript, a couple of years, no, no couple, maybe 10 years doing JavaScript, it's a big win, right? Having a functional programming language that's statically typed, that I can read, and is not total nonsense, or has a lot of parentheses, like closure, it's something I, I really like, yeah, you know? But I lied to you, I lied to you because I said this uh, reason compiles to JavaScript, and that's not entirely true, right? What reason does, it's compiling to the OCaml AST. Do you know what an AST, Avatar Syntax Tree, is? It's the representation of the code in a tree, actually. And once Reason compiles that, you can either compile to bytecode or to native code, right? Or you can have another tool that's called BackleScript, and it's a project separated from the Reason project, but it's very tight and they work together. And you can generate JavaScript out of that OCaml AST. So basically, for doing Reason, there are two parts. Reason itself and backup script that actually compile your Reason code or your OCaml AST into the JavaScript words. And that's the nice part about the right hand side of the try Reason. You get all the JavaScript that backup script actually uh, export. OK, a little bit of backup script. So let's say. Um, this is, you know, remember the say hi function? This is what get exported. So it's really readable, right? Uh, I guess you cannot read the comments, but it says, hey, this is what created by script. Beware if you are actually editing this stuff. You may broke, break some things. 
but still it's a function, it does console log, it returns because you know what, in uh, functional programming languages, la as in math, you need to return something. There is no null no concept. In reason there is, but uh, it's kind of fake. It. But you need to still re return something, so it's returning the zero, the zero there. And it's exporting everything. So one of the cool things about BuckScript is that for every reason file you have, it will export one bs.js file. It's the same. So you can actually plug it in your own code base, execute the BuckScript compiler, and get the JavaScript of that reason, and edit that JavaScript, and that will be it, right? It's uh, no more magic than that. That's for me, it's, it's nice. The other, the other thing, reason uh, BuckleScript does is export every let declaration you have. So if you have a let function, it will export it that way, even though if you're not using it. There is a way to make things private, but it uh, thinks that you want to export everything, so that's what it does by default, right? Okay. Why should I care? This is a question. I, I told you about this nice language, has all these great features, and, and I, I know what you're saying. I'm, for my day job, I, I don't care. It's like I'm writing perfectly fine JavaScript. The, yeah, it has some runtime errors, or even worse, you're telling me, maybe raise your hand and say, okay, I, I'm doing Elm, and it's much better, right? It's, it's much better from what you showed me. Or I'm doing TypeScript, so I have types, and this works. So for me, Reason has a couple of advantages, but the first one is that it has, it makes the right concessions, right? You can, you can argue that, how many of you know Elm? Uh, maybe a little. Well, Elm lives up to a promise that says no runtime errors, right? And that's a, a great promise to live by. No runtime exceptions at all, zero on your code. That's great because your users will experience the same uh, experience you have while you are developing because of course users try with different set of data and we just put John Doe on every form and that's how it works, right? That's why we have runtime issues. So that's a great promise to live by, but the important thing is that to live for that promise is very difficult to start using it, right? It's difficult to interact with uh, other JavaScript code we already have, and it's very difficult to actually understand the, the code, but at least for me it's, it's difficult, right? You need to change the way you're thinking, and you need to do things differently. And the same goes for TypeScript or Flow, how many of you know Flow, right? You, you can argue that TypeScript has types, it's really expressive, you, you cannot have the variants, but still you can do things and a lot of things and type check all your code, but when you need to bend your type system in order to you know, do something impure or something that TypeScript wouldn't like, it will let you. You can put any on TypeScript and you know, problem solved. I just put any on this variable and go away. <laughs> And that's the only thing I needed. And it's very difficult to actually come back to that code and say, okay, I need to fix all these any's, right? Because otherwise I'm not type checking anything. I'm just re renaming the file to .ts and that's it. Yes, I'm using TypeScript, but not quite, right? So for me, Reason makes really good concessions, allowing you to write 100% functional code, but at the same time, giving you the right escape hatches. And this part of the talk is about how you use those escape hatches and how the Reason team, which is actually at Facebook, this is a Facebook project, it's, it's open source, but it's led by Facebook, and it's also led by the people who created React. So that's, if you are interested on those people who is very smart, you can think they are put the same amount of effort that they put in React in, in this Reason thing. So for me, that works great, and it works great because you can do things like this, right? You can do fetch. How many of you have tried to, to do I.O. on a functional, 100% functional programming language? I don't know how many, but I try and it's difficult, right? Because I.O. is unpredictable. It's something that you're going to a server, it may or may not be there. So you need to guarantee for a 100% functional programming uh, program, you need to guarantee the result of, the, of that I.O. that's impossible to predict. The server may not be there, you may have no connectivity, the input may be wrong, right? So doing I.O. in any kind, going to a disk, it's, it's hard for functional programming. It's not impossible, but it's kind of tricky. So this is the way you, you do side effects or, or I.O. in Reason. So you ignore whatever comes there because remember I told you you need to return something on a functional programming language because it's like mathematics, so you need to actually return something. They give you that uh, 
think of, OK, I'm going to, everything that's here, ignore the result, right? And you can use a promise, and this is, uh, we can see the transpy call, but this is uh, trans transpy to, or compiles to a regular promise in JavaScript, right? And you can do fetch, and actually fetch whatever you need. And have you seen the pipe operator? It's actually turning the thing down. So instead of doing resolve of the code object of JSON, does it the other way around. It's the only thing you need to know. And it doesn't matter how it works by carrying and you only need to know that instead of doing that chained thing the, the other way around, the opposite, you can do you can use the pipes. Right? So doing side effects, it's easy. At least it's easy for me in the, in reason. There's a lot of things that are are really cool. The other thing I really like, Elm does it this way as well. You can have your own package JSON and you and that's the only thing you need to run Reason, right? You, it's an NPM package that you install. It's called BS Platform, BS for bucket script, and you get everything going. And the only thing it requires you is to, hey, please give me another file that's called bsconfig.json, who says which dependencies of the package manager are I need to transpile, I need to take in consideration when compiling. So having to not learn another package manager, for me, it's like, a plus, right? Just writing this BS config on the right, and that's it. And if you see this, I'm using BS fetch, BS axios, isomorphic fetch, all that. And but I'm just only using fetch as the dependency, read dependency of that. That's because I was testing some stuff. And all the same uh, package JSON can remain untouched. I just add some dependencies, and all the reason dependencies are actually npm packages. So let's start to do it. Let's say you, you're writing reason, and for some reason, you actually don't want to do it. You're too tired to actually think about types, or you have a function that really solves it in a different way. So what I can do? Well, there is a directive that's called raw, or BS raw, which you can actually throw a string in JavaScript, and it will do what you expect. It will compile that add function to this uh, A plus B, but without type checking anything. But still, you have a, a, a great escape hatch of actually you know, saying, OK, I don't know how to do this with types. It will be super complex. It's not compiling. I will comment all this code and put the raw JavaScript there and pray for the best. right? But it's still the same JavaScript, but now it's inside Reason, which is cooler. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, let's, so let's go here. OK. So now. My, oh, oh God, some warnings. It's not like a real thing. OK, so we have the same thing here. And important is how it transpiles or it compiles, right? So it has the add, and it's a var, and it has the thing you expected to have right here. And this is exactly this, right? So it's transpiling whatever you put in there. So we can, let's say, we do this. Well, I hope it works. Yeah, I got reference. Yeah, sorry. You know, that's not smiling ex exactly that. So, w worst, the worst, you just put the raw there and <laughs> do JavaScript as usual. But it has some other stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, val. This is more interesting, I guess. So, let's say you have something that are at your window level, like set interval, timeout, or clear interval, that you want to use, right? And you actually want to. State type, you don't want to do, you can do raw and do this whole thing I'm doing, and that will be fine. But let's say you want to keep doing with the type because we agree that types are good and something you want to have, right? So you can use the ball directive and the external keyword to say, okay, I'm going to define something that should be in the context of the compiled JavaScript, but it's not here, but I'm going to give it type. So interval, and that's how. It, that's how you put types, like your colon and then the, the type. And this is the first type, I guess, we saw that we really needed to add. Other, the other stuff was actually inferred by reason, right? But now I'm saying it's something interval is a function that will return a float, and it will take a function as the first parameter that takes nothing, that's what units is about, and returns nothing. And the second parameter, it's an integer, which is the amount of milliseconds you want to time out the, the interval. Uh, being called, right? Or your callback being called in the interval. So the same for timeout and the same for clear interval. It's, uh, it receives a float and uh, returns nothing, right? returns a unit. So you can still do that. And we will see now on the sample the, 
the compiled JavaScript code, but you can all do all that and still have the compiled thing. So let's, I think I'm boring you, but you're sorry, like it's here for half an hour, more half an hour, another half an hour. So, okay, you can do this, right? And you can still have the string, know the string to flow thing. Let's, let's do the concatenation without it, right? So let's remove this and remove this. So what happens? Here, Okama says, hey, this has a type float, but somewhere wanted a type string. So it's saying the plus plus operand wants a string on the right side, and you hand me over a float, so please change it. So we typed a function that's not typed in JavaScript. Well, this is not statically typed on JavaScript, right? And we made it work this way. So we have the both, I guess, the both of wor both words, which is having types on reason, but still consuming stuff from JavaScript land, hopefully. Somebody got asleep already, or just okay. hang in there, just hang in there. Perfect. Okay, <laughs> lastly, we have BS module, right? So I have module here. This is the first one, you don't see the comment, but it's unicornize.index, uh, slash index.js, and the thing that it does, it adds unicorns uh, at the size of your string, right? So let's say I want to consume that very important module from a recent code. I should be able to do it, right? Well, you have the VS module directly. That's another file when you can keep using the external uh, keyword and say, okay, I'm going to define unicornize, and it will return me. <coughs> it's a function that receives a string and returns a string, which is what we have down there, and I will pass the path where unicornize module is, right? And then I can use it and it will log unicornize the unicorns and develop them on the side, right? So that's another way of using other people's module. And that's, that's great because you can incrementally throw reason code into your project and use modules you've developed in other, you know, in other languages like JavaScript. So lastly on that, if you are using a very well-known library, you can use what's called a band, uh, binding, right? You can use uh, already pre-built binding, the same thing we did with, uh, with uh, module or with uh, the val, but actually download the binding from the Redux. Redux, is, I guess it's reason, uh, yeah, reason package, manage, package index, so that's the Redux all about, and that BSCSS, it's Glamour. So if you happen to like Glamour to do CSS in JS in your project and you wanted to use it in Reason, you can download it from there and boom, you have typed CSS, which I guess is cool, right? Because I am, I'm always mistaking the, the CSS keyword, so if I have a type for that, that's nice. Okay, <clears throat> lastly, these people, a language is a, it's good, but you need to have some kind of framework to actually use it, but not, some kind, that's not true, right? That's, I know that people are going to kill me for saying that, but in order to be productive, you need to use a, a framework or something, right? You cannot rely only on, on reason and doing JavaScript and typing Hiner HTML and doing stuff, right? You need a framework. So the same people who created reason created reason React, and, and that's cool because reason the reason React is not a binding of the framework. It's not like the same example I showed, BS, CSS, which are Glamour bindings to, to reason. It's actually a rewrite of the framework that you can communicate with regular React components. So things that make sense in React, in reason React goes into reason React, and things that do not make sense, like updating state with a set state function, do not make it into. There are other ways to actually do it, right? And we will take a look on this right now. So, okay, reason sample. Uh, sample time. Reason react. Where am I? Perfect. I'm on this side, sorry. I don't think you can see anything. So, here's how it goes. Reason react allows you to create components using a function because it's a functional programming language. And, and you, can, you can pass a, any string there, and that string will be the display name for your React component. How many of you have set different display name than the class name? <laughs> Not too much, probably. What? So the display name for the React thing will be button, and I will get a component. And this, this component is a record. That means it's a, it's a fixed amount of 
properties and values, right, that I can override. And then a make function. Remember I told you that you're in a top level module, but you're still in the module in this file? So you need, uh, you need a make function. This is what Reason React will look for and will invoke when you're trying to paint this component, right? This make function, let, let's, we, don't, we won't see this right now. This function will return the same component and will spread, similar to JavaScript, spread operator works, right? But I will override a render function with this new thing we will take a look now. So far, so good. I am spreading a new component and overriding only one, one function. The OCaml has classes, you can use them, but Reason React people chose to use records and overriding with spreads instead of actually using classes, which is, I guess it's, a, it's the right choice because we are in a functional programming language. It doesn't make any sense to override, uh, to extend from an object like you do in regular React and override the render method, right? But just overriding here. So this is another feature, nice feature of the language. You can have positional parameters like these children, or you can have labeled one that has this tilde here, right? So this means I will put the, if, if I put tilde content and something, that will be that parameter. It doesn't matter in any order you, you call them, you call the make function. And last parameter will be children. That's a positional instead of a labeled one. That's, that's another thing. And the reason React team translated this into props and children. So yeah, a labeled parameter is a prop. So I, will, I can pass a content prop here. And the children is the last thing you have. So it's, it's a convention, right? It will always require a children. And if you happen to know a little bit of functional programming, because the compiler is checking your types, because I, and because I'm not using children, I just underscore it for the compiler to not give me a warning. Hey, you're not using children. We can see how it, how it complies. It says, right, you use variable children. So if you wanna, uh, if you need to pass that because otherwise it won't compile, right? If, if I remove children from here, it will tell me, hey, I'm passing you uh, a last parameter and you're not, the make function doesn't have it, right? So I just put the underscore. The same, same with the self, you don't need to know what self is right now. But the cool thing is that this other stuff, this question mark means this is a maybe type. So remember we said that uh, this is fully typed. So as in a prop, you can pass a prop or not pass it, right? So how do we model that in a functional programming language? Well, you should say, hey, it may be there or it may not. And the cool thing about this, you can, you can say with that question mark, and the cool thing about doing this is once I wanted to use it, Reason or Ocamo compiler will tell me, hey, you need to handle the case where nothing gets passed. And how many of you have a uh, failing React component because somebody didn't pass a prop? Uh, I have, it happened to me, right? So it, because it, everything is typed, it will, let you, it, it will let you do, hey, I will switch context, I will pattern match this, and this is a special type that's some, and you have something, and this is a, the, the test I pass to content, so I will output content, or none, which is nobody pass anything to this make function, and I will put default, right? And uh, here you have hello Denver. Let's change that. Let's not pass any context, right? Uh, default, right? It works. So it forces you to actually uh, handle the case where nothing is happening. And this is a cool thing. And you will fight with this all the time because it's awful, it's uh, very painful to do. But at the end of the day, you realize how many things you were skipping were doing regular JavaScript stuff, right? There's just a lot of things you were not taking in account. Okay, so before you all go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Demo time, great. So. The idea of this demo is, is show you how to do a React application and actually consume some reason code from it so you don't need to actually buy the whole thing up. You don't need to actually go and put the, convert all your project to reason, but actually just the parts you are really interested in converting. So let's see if this works, but I hope it, it will. <laughs> Perfect, nobody can see anything. I hope you can see that, right? So 
this is the thing. I have a couple of, let's, let's see the app, right? Because we, I, I built a nice app for this. It will take some time, and this all the, the Denver, develop Denver talks, because I will tell you, they're exposing a JSON file that has no cores, so I was able to actually grab it and <laughs> list everything. <laughs> but that's nice, that was nice, because uh, I could use it for, for my demo, right? So some part of this uh, application is, is regular React and JavaScript, and some others uh, is just recent code, right? Doing his stuff. So let us see which part is which. And I built the two samples, I built, uh, but we're running out of time, I don't want to bore you anymore. But this is a final version, which I have an app right here. So, you know, regular stuff, I'll do a fetch on did mount and go to here. You should definitely put some course rules there. <laughs> I, will, I will put this, I will interpret the JSON and put the data. And I added a delay, I don't know why, I really wanted to show that this was uh, coming from the server. And I map over a talk, compo talk component, and this talk component is over here. It's JavaScript, right? But the only trick is that this uh, small component, it's coming from, from reason. So if you have a BS, like it, the, the norm is bucket script will output whatever .bs .js, so you know it's generated from bucket script and not a coworker did it, right? So I'm using this profile picture here as a regular React component and passing props and all that, and, it, and it's working. So let's see how that other thing was built. You see, you can see here. here. Well, this is a little styling, but I have my make function, right? Remember, it took a source name, a class name that may not be there or not be there. Let's collapse this one. May or may not be there. An author name and some children that, that I actually don't need. Then this is the tiny profile picture we saw in the, not the big one, but the profile one. So I'm creating a stated component and overriding render using a div, whatever, and using an image, passing the source. This is the same as doing equals source, right? It's in uh, reason is the same thing. And hand it over a class name that says, okay, I will pass you some style and another thing. Uh, if you pass me another class name, I will pass it here, right? So the great thing about this is I'm consuming this image, which is also a reason component. And it's pretty simple, but it receives a source, an alternative name, uh, maybe class name, and some children that I won't be using, right? So I'm here in reason land, writing reason react, right? And having types, so I can make, I can come here and say, okay, I won't pass you the source. And please, yeah, it, it works. So it's telling me, hey, the image component, which is also happened to be written in reason, wants the source thing. So you either pass it or you need to pass it something or go to that image component and change it. So how many bugs have you found in production when you just change a component that was used by everybody and you now make a prop optional or uh, on, on the contrary and everything broke, right? So it doesn't happen here in reason, but let's go back. So I will say, yeah, I will pass you the source. And this is the only thing I had to do to actually make this component React aware. I won't get into much detail about this, but it involves having a type, the ones we already saw, having a bucket script directive that says it's deriving. This is, makes this type behave as a record and not as a hash, because object in JavaScript can be hashes or record types, right? It says, hey, you, this is a record. And it tells you, hey, I will have a source a, uh, an author name and a new level string, which is the class name, which is, again, a maybe type, something that may be new, right? We need to defend ourselves because we're coming from JavaScript. JavaScript is calling us, right? And then you have this function that the, this wrap reason for JS will call that will say, okay, call make, the same make function, I have it here, right? Call make and pass the props and the new level thing and the author name, and then pass the children. This is this translates in reason as an array in JavaScript. So, and that's a, another good thing. The children in reason React are typed, and it's an array. So you cannot pass only one thing. You need to have a special syntax for it because it's everything is typed. So 
with this amount of code, I was able to create my reason component in reason react and then export it to react and use it as any regular component, right? So I think it's pretty neat. And again, I guess again, using this image component which, which was also written in, in reason and I type checking all that, right? And it's 100% guarantee that this will work and the, and the type system will keep working with this. Okay, mm, finally, oh, conclusions. The whole point, if, you, if you're gonna to have something from this talk is that you don't need to actually grab all your code and put it into reason or do it in some other language. It can be incremental. I have an application that I just showed you that has an extra NPM task to compile reason to JavaScript and then you can version your JavaScript files generated by script in the same way you, if they were authored by you. So for me, reason is a good alternative of actually stepping into the functional programming without compromising the whole project. So it's, a, it's an easier sell to a manager because no manager will tell you, yeah, well, we're doing Elm, you know? Yeah. No more talking. We're doing it forever. Everybody needs to learn Elm. Some body kind of, some places can afford that, but most places will still need to grow their own uh, JavaScript environment, right? And they still need to code on JavaScript. So for me, Reason and Backscript have the best of the both worlds. You can author Reason code, you can author JavaScript code and consume it. There is also another example which is consuming a React component from Reason. We don't need to talk about it. We talk about how to do it with regular JavaScript code. So if you're going to take something from this talk, is you can start using it today. It's super simple. It's just one NPM install away. You can do whatever you want. You can even type, it, have a reason file and put VS raw and write JavaScript and you will be using reason and you can put it on resume. Hey, I've used reason. <laughs> but <laughs> it's something, uh, take that advice. You can start using it today. I, I am using it at Ingenious. We are using it. We're very pleased uh, that it's working. And thank you. Have anything else? Questions? <laughs>